Cisco Ice, Meraki MX, Guest Splash, and Radius Authentication. All right, let's go down to our guest SSID, and you can see there's a VLAN assignment of uh, guest 666 in this case, um, and it's open. First thing you got to do is go to Access Control. And once in Access Control, you're going to select my rate. First off, you're going to select the proper VLAN, right? And then you're going to select my radius server and you're going to give it an IP address. This is an external IP address because it's dashboard, Meraki dashboard that's actually communicating with ICE. Okay. So there's a couple things that you need to consider. Um, the first thing is, is that you need to uh, make sure that you have a firewall policy allowing access from Meraki dashboard into your ICE server. So we're going to do a forwarding rule here and we are, you know, there's the internal IP address, it's 1812, and this is the IP address of the Meraki dashboard. So how do you find that out, right? Um, so the best way I thought was go into dashboard and um, very quickly type in uh, NSLOOKUP and then Everybody's dashboard, depending on your number, your, your your IP address will be different and then you can apply it. You're also going to have to add that network access device in ICE, right? Um, and I'm not walking through that piece. I've already done that. So again, it would be the external IP address that's connecting. So here we'll go into a an endpoint uh, that has wireless. We'll get logged in here. And we got to put in a username and password, right? Because here's the splash page. Now, when I do this, this is going to actually reach out to ICE if it's working properly. And ICE has got uh, obviously a tie into Active Directory and um, it should authenticate. So it looks like we got access, but let's check it out here. Awesome. It hit the authentication uh, and authorization policy we, ex we expect. Um, and we've got the authorization profile. Now, if we look a little bit deeper here, we can see that it hit the authentication policy that we expected and it hit the authorization policy and it also got this authorization result. So very quickly, we should probably jump over and, and look at the authorization result real quick. So go policy elements, authorization profiles. And again, I've already created this, right? And in this case, what we're doing is passing back the radius session timeout of 120 seconds. Now that's not usable, but I got thinking about what if I wanted to restrict it to 24 hours as an example, right? And that's a long time for me to wait for a timeout. Hence the 120 second timeout, right? Easier to test in a lab.